Hello everyone, welcome back. Today, at the request of one of my viewers, we're gonna be talking about wild animal defense and we're gonna be focusing on grizzly bear defense, all right? And when it comes to grizzly bear defense, go big or go home, okay? So we're gonna be talking about some big bore revolvers. We're gonna be talking about, we're gonna be testing them out, um, seeing the type of uh, realistic res uh, results that we can get. Uh, now, before we go any further, I want to tell you guys that you really don't have to be that scared of the bears, okay? I got bears all over the place here all summertime. I've done videos where I'm doing the video over here, and then there's a bear walking behind me about 50 feet. I've actually turned the camera so you guys can see him. And, uh, you know, as soon as he saw that I saw him, he freaking ran off into the woods. Uh, you know, if you want to scare off a black bear, all you got to do is make a lot of noise. Uh, and they're going to run off. Okay, the, the black bears usually just want your garbage, right? They want food. Uh, and if you don't want black bears, all you got to do is get yourself a bear-proof uh, garbage container, okay? Uh, but uh, that's how, you know, that's how uh, black bears usually react when they, when they see humans. Now, the problem is when, when humans feed them, right? And then they get comfortable around humans. And then what happens is, well, you feed them at your house. Then they go over to the next house thinking they're going to get fed over there. And then that person gets scared and he shoots the bear. So for the protection of the bears, don't feed them, okay? Uh, that's why uh, a couple of times, if you guys uh, watch some of my videos, um, I've used, a couple of times I've used a gun where I'm shooting it into the ground to scare the bear off. And there was another bear that had gotten so comfortable around me, uh, I needed to, 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 you know, make him more scared of humans. And I did a, a video where I set the BB gun on a very low power, shot him in the ass. He went running off okay so uh, that's how you deal with, with with black bears now grizzly bears are also scared of humans but they handle fear in a different way uh if, if a grizzly bear is scared uh he attacks okay so don't scare the grizzly bears right keep your distance uh now naturally if you're hunting right the all you know all animals have a right to self-defense if you're hunting and you wound the animal you know now he's going to become very dangerous okay so normally if you're hunting if that's your thing right what you do is you if you're hunting dangerous game, you hunt in pairs uh, apart so that if one person's being attacked, you have a second person that's shooting from a different angle, okay? Uh, so that's how you hunt dangerous animals, okay? So uh, uh, in this video, we're going to, let's talk about a couple of different guns that we could use. But uh, what, I'm gonna, what I got over there is I've got uh, some rims lined up. Those are virgin rims, so the same thing that you have on your car. And we're going to be shooting them with some different calibers uh, and seeing what the results are. So I'm going to start off with my, my Glock 43, right? Everyday carry gun. Uh, I'm going to start with that. Put a couple of shots on target. I'm going to be shooting it relatively fast. Now, those are small targets. I think they're, I don't know, maybe 14 inches tall by 5 inches wide. So those targets are a lot smaller than a bear, okay? Uh, but what, I want, what I'm testing here is I'm testing my accuracy when I'm shooting different guns on a small target, you know, at a, re at, at a self-defense type of speed. Because here's the thing, a bear can charge you at about 30 miles an hour, okay? A bear is pretty much as fast as a horse uh, in short distances, okay? So uh, if, you're, if you're being attacked, it's going to happen really fast. You got to get your shots off really fast. Uh, speed is a very important factor, okay? So uh, I'm going to start with the, with the G43, just shooting 9 millimeter at one of those rims, let me see how many hits I get, and we'll, we'll look at the rim and see what type of uh, effect it had on it, okay? So add the holster on target. Six shots, uh, seven shots actually. I know I got at least four or five hits. Uh, let, let's go take a look at the rim. Okay, so this is the virgin side of the rim, never been shot before. You can see it hit there, hit there, put a little bit of a hit there. It's got a little bit of a dent. So we got one, two, three hits, four hits, maybe five, right? Because I see a little. So I got, I got four definite hits uh, out of seven, maybe five. Let me put this to the side. I'm going to line them up in that same order in case we 
So let's come back to that to look at it again. Okay, so now we're gonna go to the next room, the next room with the uh, 44 Magnum Ruger Red Hawk. Uh, it's got, there's a six shot revolver, okay, uh, 240 grain bullet. All right, we're gonna be drawing out of the holster. And uh, I did do a little bit of shooting with this earlier. Uh, two problems that I found is uh, when I have the jacket on, that hammer uh, did snag a couple times on my jacket as I was coming up, and that just completely stopped, you know, slowed me down. The other thing is because it's a longer barrel, uh, as I come out, uh, you know, basically the longer barrel drags on the holster. So, you know, that might, now the, those two things, the hammer and the longer barrel, that just might be a matter of more practice, getting used to the gun. But that's that's the first issue that I found with this gun. That as I came out of the holster, the hammer was snagging, and the longer barrel was having a harder time clearing the holster. Let's take six shots at that, which is now the first room over there. Uh, see how many hits we can get. You, you guys saw I got four hits with the first one that we know for sure. Let's uh, let's see how many hits we can get. I know I got some hits because obviously that got knocked down. Now that's as fast as I could shoot and still stay on target because every time I shot, you know, there was significant recall. Let's look at the hit. So we got one here. Did it fully? I mean, it, it cracked it open. It didn't penetrate because that hole is definitely not big enough for a bullet to pass through. We see a good dent over here. Okay, uh, I do see some. That there might have been some shots that glanced off of it, but I see two solid hits. Okay, uh, now the fact that it fell over changed my, you know. Uh, Change my angle of aim, that might have been a difference in the accuracy. But we got two hits uh, out of uh, out of the six. Um, and uh, you can go back and you can look at the timing between the, the, the nine millimeter and the, uh, the, the 44 Magnum to see how fast I was shooting one versus the other. Okay, so next. Raging Judge Magnum, okay? Um, this is one hell of a gimmick gun. This gun shoots three different calibers. 454, uh, I'm sorry, 45 long Colt, okay? Which, in this heavy gun, which weighs like four and a half pounds, feels like it's shooting 22s. Uh, 454 Casul, which is, you know, a pretty heavy uh, a cartridge, definitely much heavier than the, uh, the 44 Magnum. And any 410 uh shotgun shell okay so you can shoot the three up three inch shotgun shells anything that you can put in there buckshot slugs birdshot i've actually used this to bust clay discs in here with birdshot you just gotta shoot it fast pretty much i gotta shoot it before it gets more than 30 feet away because otherwise the shot just breaks up um we're going to shoot at that rim over there now that which is now the first rim let's get this in the holster now this holster was not designed for this gun all right, because I normally don't carry that four and a half freaking gun. A gun this size, because uh, because guns this size did exist historically, like the uh, uh, the uh, Colt Walker, okay, uh, was about this size, four and a half pounds. You carried that in the saddle holster, right? So basically, you hung this on the horse. You didn't carry a four and a half pound gun on your body, okay? Let me just check the camera, make sure it's still rolling. And well, yeah, we're still going. All right, so uh, this is also six shots. Oh, by the way, this one has two latches, right? There's a latch in the front and the latch. So you got to open up from both latches. Okay. Now, one thing that's worth noting, because this is such a big cylinder, there's a lot of mass there, a lot of weight. So uh, 
remember every time you pull the trigger it's rotating that cylinder it that that heavy mass turning slows you down a lot it takes a lot more energy to a lot more strength to rotate that cylinder and as the gun gets dirty that compounds in a way that you know if this gun gets dirtier faster than let's say a small bore gun like a 357 or something um and that affects the rotation faster okay i've actually had situations where like you know i had to use these you see the fluting over here there's a reason why you put it there so you can manually rotate it when it gets stuck okay so if you shoot the gun enough it gets dirty enough um you know that's how you're gonna you, you're gonna rotate it. you're gonna single action it rotate rotate the uh the cylinder as you pull the hammer back so you can fire the gun uh, if it gets dirty okay so let's go back in the holster i'm gonna take six shots on that first rim over there let's see if we you know how fast i can shoot uh and still stay on target so here's the thing i'm not going fast like if i see my sights are coming off target I'm, I'm slowing down the goal is to try and get hits right so let's fire I got one hit with a short turn, but I definitely don't think I did as well with this gun. So I got one hit, but bam, it was a hit. Look at that, it actually tore a hole in it. Not only did it cut a hole through it, but it wasn't like even like it hit its center. It hit it like, because the rim was actually sitting like this, and it caught it at this angle. Normally, like, your shots would glance at that angle. Because it had so much power, even at this angle, it actually pushed through. The drawback is because of that heavy recoil, and the gun being heavier, and the harder trigger pull, I could only get one hit. My finger's starting to get cold. <laughs> uh, I, I wanted to do this without gloves on because I wanted to really test my accuracy, you know, with these guns. So if I put gloves on, that would have threw off the test a little bit. I mean, I know how, I know that there's, there's, there's definitely a drop. Like, because I shoot 9mm with gloves all the time, I can see the drop there. So I, I didn't want to have that drop in accuracy uh, in this test. So we're, we're almost through it. Okay. Five hundred Smith and Wesson, baby. <laughs> there she is, right there. Five hundred. Let's uh, get this gun. Now, here's the interesting thing. This gun, even though it's more powerful, this is the most powerful production handgun in the world, right? It's got the fluid. It's got the uh, ported barrel. This is a lighter gun than this gun. So here's the problem: lighter gun, more power more recoil more felt recoil okay um so this gun when i shoot this with full power loads it feels like i'm getting hit in the in the, in the palm over here with, with, with a hammer okay so this is a gun that i probably have not i've had this gun for like eight years i don't think i don't even think i've shot 100 rounds with this I, i've probably shot like maybe probably 60 or 80 rounds uh i don't think i've shot 100 rounds now other people that it, the reason why I have this gun, because a lot of times I, um, well, first of all, let me tell you the backstory of this. About 10 years ago, right, for, for, for the first, I don't know, between the ages of 17 and 35, I was a hardcore power lifter, okay? So, back in the day when I was benching, I don't know, some 350 pounds, squatting some 450 pounds, right? Okay, this gun was like the gun for me. It was all testosterone, right? Um, so... Uh, a lot of times I, you know, when I'm training people, I, I run into a lot of muscle heads like I used to be and they want to shoot this gun. Now, when I bought this gun, I was really like, at the point where I bought this gun, I was already like 38 years old. So I was way past my prime as a power lifter. Uh, so that's the reason why I have not shot this gun a whole lot. So this gun, because of that heavy recoil, basically you got to have the wrist for it. So it's not to say that 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 the average person can't shoot this gun 
but the average person is not going to enjoy shooting this gun, okay? So if you're a 300 pound bencher, right, you can enjoy shooting this gun, okay? So let's get this in the holster before my fingers get too cold. All right, so we're going for that first rim over there now, right? Let's see. Now, this is only a five shot. Five shot, okay? Single latch, okay? Um, let's see how we can do with this gun. I only got two hits. I heard two two dings. No hits. Uh, I did hear two dings, but that might have been because maybe I hit the ground on the, the ground and it bounced up and hit it. Uh, but, but no hits with that gun. Um, so that we're seeing as we go from bigger and bigger and bigger, my, the number of hits are, are going lower and lower and lower. Okay. Um, that's the, 40, that's the uh, 500 Smith & Wesson. Okay. Now, how many, first of all, let me put my gloves on because my hands are just starting to get a little too cold now. <laughs> starting to numb out in the ends a little bit. Um, we shot the big boys. I'm going to give you my, you guys my opinion on uh, what, I, what I would carry. Uh, if you were to take me and, and, and let's say take me out to, I don't know, Monta Montana or some, some place in the, somewhere where they have lots of bears, right? But I really don't know the area, right? Because let's be realistic, okay? Like in this area, I got bears, but I know the bears. I know, I know um, what to expect from them. I know uh, what they react to, okay? So I know the bears in my area. Okay, the people that live in places where they got grizzly bears, okay? They they probably know what to expect from them. They probably know where to go, where to not go. Um, so, so if I was to go to a place where they had grizzly bears, I would talk to the people that live there and, and, and see what they do, right? How, how do they defend themselves, right? Um, so that, that's, the, that's the first thing I'm going to put out there. Talk to the people that actually live there. That, that's going to be your, your best source of information, okay? Uh, you know, they're, if they're there, they're alive, they've already figured out what works, okay? So we're going into this as a, as a tourist that's, or whatever, basically I've been picked up i've been kidnapped and i've been taken to a forest somewhere in i don't know north dakota or montana or one of those areas over there where they you know and i'm just guessing they got grizzly bears over there i don't know uh brown bears or kodiaks basically you just basically just 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 took me there and just dropped me over there and you and you said hey what guns do you want to take with you okay the gun that i think i would take All right, let's see how this gun does. So, real, realistically, let's not, let's not completely cheat this, right? So we're not going to go from here to here, right? Because that's just a little too fast, right? Right? Uh, we're, let's assume that we're not, we haven't seen the bear, and the way that we're going to have the gun is like this, right? So that's kind of like it being uh, in the holster, right? On your back. And you're doing other stuff. I mean, I don't know what you're doing in the woods, but you know, you're doing you're doing other stuff. Guns slung around your back. So this is the position that we're going to be starting off from. Uh, we're shooting at that at that rim over there. Uh, the, the one rim that we have left. Okay. Uh, let's see how we do.
Okay, let's go look the rim. So, first of all, I think I shot that the fastest, okay? Uh, now, I was shooting this with Tula, okay? Which is uh, basically, as far as 223 goes, is on the low end, okay? And I'm also shooting it out of a 10 and a half inch barrel. The reason why I picked 10 and a half inch barrel is because I figured, hey, I'm not in the woods specifically to hunt. I'm not there to, I'm there to do all the things most likely, right? Um, I would probably want to have the six inch, inch barrel Right, full length, but hey, let's say that, you know, we're, we're, you know, hey, listen, they're all pistols, right? So technically, this is an AR pistol, right, with a brace here. It's not a rifle, okay? So that's why it's in this category. That's another good, that's another reason for me to say that I picked the uh, 10 and a half inch versus the uh, a six and inch, which is, uh, you know, technically a rifle, okay? So let's see what we got here. Uh, first of all, like I said, I think I shot that the fastest. Okay, uh, it looks like my shots were pulling a little bit to the left. We got one, two, three, we got four over here, okay. Two of them got really nice penetration. And then one actually uh, turned the rim a little bit and hit it here. So I got five, uh, five out of um, uh, six shots. I put six in there. Um, that's interesting. And there's actually, there's, there's another hit right here. I'm trying to figure out if that bullet came in and maybe deflected down. I don't know, but maybe that might be my sixth shot there that glanced. That's probably my sixth shot that glanced. That's a crazy angle to go in from there and turn that fast, that far down. No, that one probably went through this hole here. Uh, too bad that, uh, that we have a hole here. Would have been nice to see, to see the hit over here. Because I can definitely hear it, see that it caught the edge over here. So, actually, now that I think about it, with this glancing shot, with that shot right there, that's my sixth shot. All six sh shots were on target. So, we got four over here, five, six. Six shots on target. This is another rim that I shot earlier with green tips. Okay. The green tips went through a lot more decisively, right? Not, but not only did they go in decisively, look what it did to the back side of it. They went through, through this side, came out that side, okay? So the green tips, uh, in fact, that green tips, like they got like penetration, like, like weird angles, like you see on the curve over here. So when you consider front and back, the green tips are getting way more penetration uh, than any of those revolvers over there, right? Way, way more penetration. Now, uh, also e faster, easier to deploy, right? I think it was a lot easier to come up. Uh, the problem, the problem that I have found with the big revolvers is, uh, is, is the longer barrel tends to catch on the holster, and I'm also finding that the, that the hammer is also. Uh, catching my clothing of course you could cut off the the spur well i don't like to do that to revolvers but you could cut off the spur to prevent but then the sights might you know, other things might catch your, your rear sight might catch you know so uh that's going to be a problem with the, with the big with the, with the revolvers with the uh with the ar pistol get my hood up so i don't get caught up in this position here, the, I mean, nothing's faster, right? Come up, safety off, boom, 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 okay? The recoil is nothing, so, with the, with the, with the 5.56, five, so you can take lots of shots really fast, and you've got a 30-round magazine, which is a big thing. So here's the thing. Uh, one of the concerns that I had while I was shooting is the fact that I only had six rounds to try and get hits. That was actually a concern... For a different reason, um, the the 
I mean, concern in an actual self-defense situation is can you get your, actually get your hits on target? My concern for the purpose of the test was more along the lines of can I get a hit so I can, uh, so I can make, you know, so people can see what type of impact it has the rim, okay? So as I was doing this in my mind, I'm like, okay, I only got six shots to make this happen, okay? Uh, now, even though on the AR, I only had put six shots in there intentionally, okay, um, I could have had all 30 in there, right? And especially in a situation where, let's say you have a, 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 an animal that's charging you, uh, my idea of a realistic self-defense situation okay, is when you come out of the holster, right, that first shot is going to be point shooting, okay? So, holy shit, come out, you know, get, I mean, it's hard enough because I got the, have the glove on, but get out, boom, fire that first shot, right? After, you know, point shoot the first shot, then pick up your sights and try to take the follow-up shots. I, I think that that's a realistic type of self-defense shooting that, that people a lot of times don't talk about. You know, just point shooting the first shot, then looking for your sights or for your red dot, okay? Uh, with, the, with the rifle, or, the, or rather, uh, excuse me for the error, okay? ATF didn't hear that. With the pistol, okay, with the pistol over here, okay? Uh, my arms are further apart. So basically, I'm just pointing my arms at the target, right? Because I have the benefit of my arms being further apart. So as I come up, I just throw my arm right underneath the head of the animal, right? Uh, so like normally with a human, I'm throwing this part here underneath their sternum over here, right? And then when I throw this underneath the sternum, okay, what happens is the, um, you know, the dot is usually center mass, okay? So with the with an animal, basically I would put it to the bottom of its chest, because the bear's probably about this tall, so I would go right to the bottom of its chest. I would throw my arm to the bottom of the chest, all right? And that's gonna put my dot on target. I'm probably not gonna pick up the, 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 the dot on the first, well, actually, this has a, six, a 65 MOA circle. So I'm probably just going to point shoot the first three shots and then find my dot, you know, find that circle and start putting rounds on target. And I can comfortably point shoot the first three shots because I know I got a full magazine, okay? Um, so I think that that's a, that's it. That's, I feel a lot more comfortable with that. I feel a lot more comfortable knowing I got more bullets, um, than more powerful bullets, okay? And 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 here's the thing. Uh, let's talk about power for a second. Because we saw. Because here's the thing. You can look at the numbers, and then you can look at the actual effect. Okay. So the actual effect of the green tips is you get to penetrate steel, a rim here, going through both sides, like unquite, like it went through here, like a laser, okay. And then on this side over here, it came out. Okay. Uh, now, as you can see on the back side, like on the back side, it doesn't come out at like a laser. So you can see how it kind of pushes out. But it's it's coming out though. Okay. So it still has enough energy to do that. Okay. Um, none, of, none, of the, none of the big bores were able to do that. Even when they penetrated, That's that was like closer to like the max, you know. Because I've, I've actually hit... With, that, with this 500, I have shot this 500 where I've gotten clear penetration. And every shot that hits that rim with this gun is going to penetrate it, but it's not going to come out the backside. Right? Because it's such a bigger bullet that it, it uses a lot more of its energy to make that bigger hole. When it gets to the backside, it, it usually has lost its energy. Um, so now let, let's consider that, okay? Uh, do we want... Do we, do we want momentum or do we want energy? Because the, the, the bullet I was shooting at this was 440 grains, right? It was a 440 grain. Um, so let me throw some numbers at you guys. Okay, so some numbers. I've actually calculated these myself with the chronograph, okay? On the ARs, 62 grain green tips, uh, 16 inch barrel, 1154 energy, 25 momentum. 10-inch uh, barrel, 930 energy, 23 momentum. 7.5-inch barrel, 640 energy, 19 momentum, okay? Now, let's compare that to the 44 Magnum, okay? Actually, let me hold it up for you guys to see here. Let's co compare it to the 44 Magnum, okay? 44 Magnum, okay, which we did get penetration. No, actually, did it penetrate? No, it was the first one. No, we didn't get... 
That's why I lined the rims up over here. That vertical mat, I remember now. It 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 didn't it, it, it cut one of the rounds cut through it, but it I mean it kind of pushed it back and created an opening, but uh, unlikely that the bullet really passed through. And the second shot that we hit was a uh, was a, was a deep dent. Okay, so the 44 Magnum um, has an energy of 720 foot pounds of energy. Okay, but it has a momentum of 40. Okay, so it has less energy. Right, then that 10 and a half inch barrel because that one's up here. That one is at 930 energy versus the 44 Magnum at 720. But the difference is the, the, the 44 Magnum has a momentum of 40, whereas the, the green tip had a momentum of 23. Okay, so now just so we don't have to come back to it, the 454 had an energy of 1241, momentum of 51, and the 500 has an energy of 1834. And a momentum of 77, okay? So, what do these numbers mean to us as far as uh, energy and momentum, okay? So, if you're shooting with the way I'm, the way I visualize, visualize this, with the, with the green tip 5.56, five, right? When you're shooting, let's say, a big animal like a bear, okay? You get, you, because it's more like a whipping action, right? It's a faster bullet. You're going to get more penetration. Now, here's the thing. Normally, when you shoot, let's say, a, a, a man, right, the 5.56 five, will pass right through. So, so it, it, it passes right through, and basically all that extra energy, all that extra momentum just shoots out the back. Because the bear is a big animal, okay, I don't think that it, the bullet's actually going to pass through. So, all of that momentum is actually going to be trapped inside of the body, and it's, it's going it's, to, you know, and plus that, that, that the 5.56 five, is tumbling, right? Uh, so all of that momentum is going to be pushed deep into the organs because the 556 five, is going to give us more penetration. So the, the momentum that it carries with it is going to push deeper into the body, like when it gets to the organs, versus the, let's say the 44 Magnum with its momentum, or let's, let's just go to the 500, for example. The 500 with its momentum of 77, okay? What I think is going to happen with that, um, it's a fatter bullet, right? So, I mean, obviously it's going to penetrate, uh, but I don't think it's going to penetrate as deep. Now, when it hits, it's going to put a lot more um, momentum onto the area that it, that it impacts. But I think that more of that, that, that power is going to be on the outside versus deep in, inside where the organs are. So, the reason why I think that the... 5.56 five, or let's say 7.62 by 3.9, right? You can be an AK for that matter. Um, you know, you, you can have a short barrel AK. In fact, I think the short barrel AK would probably do a little bit better for this, right? Actually, uh, I did a test on, I did a, with the, with the AK, we've got energy of 13.31, momentum of 38, right? So that, that's kind of like a sweet spot, kind of gives you the best of everything, right? And then with the Draco, right, if you've got the 10-inch the barrel, uh, energy of 11.55, momentum of 35. Um, so I think that the AK is actually a better choice. It's just that they're less common. Uh, that's why I didn't, I, because I, I thought of pu pulling out my 10-inch AK and doing this with the 10-inch AK, but most of you guys at this point, unless you guys are old like me and started collecting guns like some 10, 15 years ago, most of you guys are not going to have AK. So that's why I said, hey, let me just stick with the gun that most of you guys are, are probably going to have. Um, but... Uh, what, what I I lost my train of thought now. What, what I think is what, what I think is going to happen is with the with the AK and with the two two three, you're going to get deeper penetration into the organs, and it's going to interrupt those organs more deeper. Versus let's say with a forty four Magnum, the four fifty four Casul, the five hundred, when it hits, it's going to hit the surface. It's going to put more um, uh, more of that energy on the and more of that power on the surface rather than deep inside the animal. Now, the thing to understand with the with a bear that's that weighs some 1,200 pounds, right, and is charging at 30 miles an hour, you can shoot it through the heart, 
and it still has enough momentum to crash into you and still kill you because you still got like a thousand pound animal that's crashing into you, okay? Uh, so you can put every shot on target, kill the animal, um, and you can still get killed. So that, that's an important thing to uh, consider, the animal's momentum moving towards you, okay? Uh, so it, my choice, I think I would rather have an AR or an AK, 30-round magazine. I would probably go with, uh, you know... Because I expect to be shooting at close distances, it's really like self-defense against an animal. I would go with a short barrel, a 10-inch barrel. I want to go to the seven and a half inch barrel because I think that loses too much energy. Uh, but hey, I mean, going with a six inch is fine too. But we are talking about pistols here, or, you know, handguns. So uh, I would probably go with this 30-round magazine. You've got a lot more bullets to put on target. Okay, but here's the other thing to consider: uh, there's other animals out there. Okay, so. The problem with going, let's say, with a with the 44 Magnum, right, or, or the 454 Pursuit or the 500, right? What if what if it's not a bear that you that you got to deal with? What if it's a pack of wolves, right? You got a whole pack of wolves, you know, 12 wolves, 15 wolves, okay? You only got six rounds in here, you, you know. So so a bear is not the only animal that you might encounter. Uh, the AR um, is, will be better suited to handle a pack of wolves compared to a revolver that only has six rounds. Now, you always want to have a backup gun. Uh, so I would I'm definitely, I would definitely have two guns, right? Probably three guns, okay? Uh, uh, but I would ha definitely have two guns, take the AR or the AK, right? Um, and then I would probably take a 40 cal, right? Uh, I've shot 10 millimeter. Uh, here's the thing, there's, I've seen very little difference. There is a difference. The 10 millimeter does have extra power, but the 10 millimeter... 10 millimeter today is not like 10 millimeter was, I don't know, some 20 years ago, okay? Uh, they have been, they, they, they've been coming down lower and lower in power. So the, and, and the 40 cals have been, I think, maybe going a little bit higher. The 40, the 40 cal has been developed a little bit more. So the difference between the 40 cal and the, and the 10 millimeter, practically, like when you actually test it through a chronograph, it is not that big. Um, and I, I kind of like the, I think the 40 cal might be a better choice, especially if you have to deal with a lot of a lot of you know wolves or you know coyotes or stuff like that, right? That that lighter recoil, you know, the ability to keep your gun on target and not have it bounce all over the place might be more of a benefit. So what I'm going to go is I'm going to go with the uh, AR pistol and then with a, with, a, with, a, with a 40 cal as the backup, and then I might even just. Throw the G4. Oh, it's on the table now. I might even throw the G43 somewhere, you know, as a backup to the backup, you know. Um, so those are my thoughts on that. Uh, but like I said at the beginning of the video, um, the animals are really not likely to attack you. Uh, they're pro they're probably more scared of you than they are of uh, you know than than you are of them. Uh, the people that that live in those areas, I don't think they live terrified of these of these animals, okay? So, if you, look, if you when you go to an area like that, talk to the people there, get some information from them, uh, figure out what areas they go to, maybe it's certain areas that they don't go to, or maybe certain time of day that they don't go to certain areas. Uh, so, that's the that's the first thing I, I would do if, if going into an area that I'm not familiar with. Uh, but if, I, if, if, if you're gonna airdrop me into an area I'm not familiar with, I would definitely take the AR, first of all, most dangerous animal that you're likely to meet is probably another human, okay? Or a pack of humans. Um, so, yeah, definitely the take an AR. Um, you know, normally I would take, let's say, a Glock 17. But, hey, since we're talking about bigger animals, maybe I'll go with the 40 cal. Uh, and then maybe, you know, throw that G43 someplace else on my body. Um, like I said, don't be so scared of the bears. Don't just kill them. If you're going to kill animals, make sure you're eating them, right? Everything, you know... Um, uh, t to me, you know, life is precious, you know, uh, so, so I, I don't like, you know, I, I mean, hey, listen, I've, I, 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 eat, I eat animals, I've got a hundred chickens, I've butchered, I've butchered animals, but I eat what I kill, okay, so I think that's important, um, and I think that's something that uh, a lot of people living in the cities don't understand, especially the ones that say, hey, when you go into the woods, just bring in some pepper, pepper spray, okay, that pepper spray is only going to work on a black bear that was scared of you to begin with, right, if you had just yelled at it, it probably would have ran away from you, uh, but if you've got a, an animal that's, uh, you know, like a grizzly bear that that uh, that perceives you as a threat, uh, the pepper spray is not going to do anything. Uh, if you go to the North Pole where they got, I guess, polar bears. Now, polar bears are different. 
So polar, polar bears, you know, in that part of the world, uh, it's very hard for them to find food. So, so to a polar bear, anything that's alive is a, is a potential food source, okay? Uh, so whereas, you know, the, the, the typical black bears, brown bears, grizzly bears don't want anything to do with humans, a polar bear will see you as a potential food source. So there's a different mentality there, right? And polar bears are a little bit different. Not that I think most of you guys are going to go to an area where they're polar bears, but, uh, but just keep that in mind. Polar bears, uh, uh, you know, would attack you uh, with the intention of trying to eat you because they're really hungry, okay? So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you got some ideas of your own, put them in the comment section. If you got a different choice of guns, let me know. I would, I would love to hear your ideas. Uh, if you're not a member of the channel, subscribe. And hit that bell button so you get notification of the new videos I put up. Talk to you all soon.